Hello, Metroconic Scholar. I'm Aiko, the modded Minecraft streamer and Trasmensa server owner. Now I'm going to show you how to make a semi-automatic Tinker's Construct smeltery for Sky Factory 4 to, to double your ores. All the information you need will be linked in the description down below. This video is a part of Sky Factory 4 playlist and modded Minecraft playlist. You can click the card on the top right to watch my modded Minecraft playlist. What you will need is a few casting table, uh, one smeltery controller, a fuel source, and a tank. Uh, in this example, I'm going to use seared bricks, but you can use any. Um, you can use the cheaper stuff like seared stone. The cheapest version is going to be seared stone instead of seared bricks. You can use that instead to build. Uh, you need you need some seared faucet. You need a you need a few seared train. Okay, just like that. So that's all the stuff you need for now. Let's just start building. In order to make it look pretty, uh, let's go with this. I'm going to go with a 30 by 30 design, but you can honestly make it as big as you want. First, dig out a floor for your design. Put it down 30 by 30, just like the, just like the normal version. But instead, this time I want to make it a little bit higher. So I want to have my tank right here. This is going to be my fuel source. So I can import, import fuel in here uh, automatically. Okay, I will be importing fuel in here automatically. So I don't need to worry about it. Okay, next we continue to place it space like this. Have a controller right above the tank. Have a smeltery controller right above the tank. Next, I want to have the drain over on the right side. Yep, I do not want the drain from the uh, left side, but you could put the drain over on the left side if it suits you. So here's the, um, for this design, I want the left to be the input and the right is to be the uh, output. So inputting in the amber from the left and outputting the um, ingot from the right, okay? So now, I'm just going to place down with uh, normal bricks because I don't want to see what is inside. And then you can use some glass if it looks pretty. So you just use some glass so you can just hover in. You want to build this as, uh, as tall as you want. Yeah, you can build this as tall as you want. For this demonstration, I'm going, I'm only going to build it 3 by 3 by 3. Yeah, for this demonstration, I'll make it 3 by 3 by 3. So it is super compact. Okay, just like that. Very simple. Now put your drain over on the right side and have a casting table, casting table, and a basin if you want a basin. If you don't want a casting uh, basin, you can use a casting table. For me, I'm gonna use a basin. In a mod pack that doesn't have the silic redstone clock, you uh, can use a lever. Yeah, the silic redstone clock is crafted with four iron, one redstone repeater, and four redstone. You get yourself a redstone clock. So what the redstone clock does is going to be um, timing for the right click. So it is going to send a post and a signal. So it's literally a vanilla redstone clock within one block, and you can configure it. For me, I'm not going to use the redstone clock. I want to make this video accessible for everyone, even when they or when Sky uh, even when they don't play Sky Factory, or maybe when Sky Factory updates and the new, uh, the new uh, Sky Factory does not have redstone clock. So I'll be using a lever instead. Lever. As long as the lever is um, turned on, it acts exactly the same like a redstone clock. You can place the lever on glass as well. So I will have them turn off for now. Well, when you turn it on, it will continuously flow, sending a redstone signal to this uh, constantly. As long as there's the same liquid and the same material, it will um, not stop. Okay, now. I want the imp. I want to have two chests. You can honestly have any sort of input system uh, that you want, but for me, I'm going with a vanilla chest. You can even go with a chest builder to build yourself a very big chest. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So since I want the output to be on the uh, outside, on the right side, I'm gonna place it here so it looks aesthetically pleasing. Next. Let's go with a fuel supply. I'm going to go with lava. Four bucket of lava for the fuel. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go with an automatic fuel. Click the card on the right side to watch Sky Factory 4, how to get early game lava generator. Okay, 
let's go over here we're going to grab ourselves a gps signal but you can use anything you want i'm going to be doing this wirelessly so it looks pretty shift right click with the gps marker this is a part of another video in the playlist i'll leave the information in the description put it back in here and now we have a uh, infinite fuel supply infinite fuel source as soon as this thing runs out that generator over there is going to uh, pump more lava in here okay next what you're going to need is an item extraction cable extraction cable not fluid but item get yourself an item extraction cable and item cable to craft the item extraction cable you need four iron nugget one dropper and one weighted pressure plate you're going to place it below the ca casting table so it's um, going to you're going to place it below the casting table so it's going to pull the ingot out from the casting table and put it into the chest so i'm going to get myself a uh, casting mode just get yourself a few uh ingot cast yeah ingot cast I'm going to get myself a few ingot casts over here so I don't want to be wasteful. This one is going to be a block form. Let's dig down, dig the 3D blocks. If you don't have creative fly, you don't really need creative fly for this. Just um, just do it like this. I want to hide the wire with uh, f f facade, facade. Yeah, I want to hide the wire with facade, but it's, um, let's just pretend like it's not within this mod pack. So we're going to hide it within the, hide it with the, um, with some dirt block okay shift right click on the casting basin why did it place down a dirt block i'm confused shift right click on the casting basin uh shift right click on shift right click on the casting table with the item extraction cable now you want to put the normal item cable linking to this chest so we have our little system set up right here the idea is the liquid is going to flow out into the mold, solidify into ingot, and then the item cable is going to pull it out and put it into this chest. Now we got the export part of this build done. Now we're going to work on the import. Um, in order to make this look pretty, we could make this uh, look pretty really nice if we place the chest close by. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to place a chest right here. This is going to be the buffer chest. You can use a wireless item transfer from your uh, automatic bonsai pot setup with a auto crafting amber setup to put all of the um, amber you want to convert. No, not all. It's a particular specific amber that you want to smelt so it doesn't mix up uh, the uh, the ink get okay so go with that this is the buffer chest for it let's uh, go for example simply put a uh, item extraction cable below the chest and linking into the uh, controller if you see the wires goes like this going into the smelt into the controller that means you're doing it right so whatever item is inside of this chest is going to be automatically placed into the controller if the controller has room and it's not full i'm going to show uh, show you this demonstration i'm going to show you by putting osmium in here as you can see the osmium is being drained out automatically put into the smeltery as shown right here and as soon as the smeltery is done it is going to be uh, converted we need to uh, flick the lever into on state so now let's just wait until it turns into uh, molten form yeah in the meantime we're waiting for it to turn into molten form i'm going to put a bunch more osmium as the uh, buffer size as you can see this can hold a lot more so it is a very useful way to smelt a large quantity of amber without needing to uh, without needing to um, manually put into the smeltery one item at a time okay just like that you can also have a setup where you have blacklist so um, one chest can be put into multiple smeltery and it only accept one uh, any item that doesn't convert into alloy or the right amount but i still recommend one alloy per smeltery okay as you can see this one is going pretty good 12 blocks of molten osmium now all we got to do is right click on the lever to activate it it is going to solidify and it's going to automatically drain out putting all our stuff into our chest and you can sort it out or you can use a wireless item transfer and put it into your me system very basic um semi-automatic i say semi-automatic but it's actually fully automatic it cannot convert 
it cannot do every type of alloy so you need to make multiple smeltery in order for this fully automatic system to work and that is it let me go with a couple facts and question as well as some disclaimer so let's go with that real quick smeltery amount um you can honestly make an unlimited amount of smeltery as long as your world permits it it is not going to cause any lag the liquid does not count as um solid solid blocks so the entity count won't lag you you can have multiple smeltery without lagging your your world or your minecraft server um i tested this on my trustmensis server and no lag uh, next, redstone, yes, the redstone clock from Civic uh, does cause a little bit of lag, but if you use it in moderation, it won't be too bad for your Minecraft world or the Minecraft server, as long as you don't have the tech delay too low. Let's say you want to make um, manium, manium, yeah, this one. Let's say you want to make molten uh, manium, uh, damn it, why can I not say this word, Man. Yo Liam. Manulem? Okay, whatever this word is, I suck at it. Anyways, let's say you want to make uh, a bunch of those. Instead of using a lever, if you use a lever, it is going to train out cobalt or ardite. And you want to train out manulium, which has a conversion time of um, 2 millibucket per second. That means that means you want to use the redstone clock, put it on a delay for, um, let's say... 10 seconds. Put it on a delay for 10 seconds with a one second tick. That way it won't convert. Uh, it will wait until the molten cobalt and molten ardite convert into the molten manulium. Cause the, um, because the chest doesn't really uh, discriminate which one gets put into the system. As you can see, it's already clogging up because it's not fast enough. So yeah. Next. Fuel tier list. The fuel tier list, like I said before, it is fiery essence, lava, and the best one is uh, blazing pyrothium. But blazing pyrothium is the most expensive. You can also put any liquid directly into the um, uh, container. Yeah, let's show that off. You can also put any sort of liquid inside of the smeltery directly, simply by right click onto the uh, sear train, just like that. As you can see, I just put the molten. Um, Molten manuolium inside. I can just right click and it's gonna put it inside the blaze. Let me right click. Now it's lava. Right click. Make sure to just right click onto the sear train. It is going to put in. If you hover over the sear train, it also tells you how much uh, molten liquid the smeltery can hold. Okay, next. Transporting the um, tank. Yeah, you can transport the tank simply by breaking them with a pickaxe, or you can transport the tank by um, by shift right clicking with empty hand. If you're playing Sky Factory 4, you can shift right click to pick up the uh, pick up the tank and place it down somewhere else to transport them from uh, fuel source to fuel source. Okay, next, seared stone. Yes, you can use seared stone, so you can have a very weird and ugly looking design like this. Let me just show. You can mix and match your design just like this and it's going to work just fine. It is going to look very ugly, but um, it is going to be no, uh, functioning properly, yeah. The smeltery is going to function properly when, even when you do this horrible monstrosity of a build towards it. <laughs> it is uh, quite ugly looking. So mixing and mashing the design does work for the smeltery. I don't rec uh, I don't recommend you know doing randomly. However, just just don't do stuff too random, and you should be fine. Okay, so if you draw any item inside of the smeltery when it has a molten liquid, uh, the item will get burned up. So do be careful. Yeah, you can have multiple seal tank as the fuel source and it's going to contain and hold more fuel. As you can see right here, we have 10 buckets of uh, we have 10 buckets of blazing pyrothium as fuel instead of 4. Harder temperature does uh, allow the smeltery to go a lot faster. Uh, porcelain bricks does not work because it's not from Tinker's Construct, so if you place down porcelain bricks, it won't consider as a part of the smeltery, even though porcelain bricks looks uh, really cool. This video was recorded on my Trustmensis server. If you want to play modded Minecraft with me, just subscribe to me on Twitch, Twitch TV, a go to Draco. Link and everything you need will be in the description down below. Uh, if you have any question or run into any problem, feel free to join my Discord and let me know. Comment down below what video idea you want to watch next. 
I will feature your comment in the next video. You can join me live at Twitch TV Ago to Draco every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 9 a.m. EST playing modded Minecraft. Share this video with your friend. This is going to help my channel grow and allow me to continue making more modded Minecraft video. Subscribe to my YouTube and ring that notification bell so you never miss another upload for more Sky Factory 4 content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye!